Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy. Sandy Kreisberg, that would be. There he hello, is. Hello, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Sandy's in Boston, and so is our candidate today. We're in and around Boston, I think. He's, his name is Leo, and uh, he's a fascinating candidate. He went to the College of New Jersey, uh, majored in finance, got a 3.6. He took the GRE as a 322 score. He's a realtor uh, for Compass. He's been a realtor for Coldwell Banker. He has sold cars at Tesla and sold solar panels at Sunrun, and he wants an MBA. The schools that are his targets, Harvard, Cornell, Columbia, Wharton, Yale, MIT, and Babson. So Sandy, what do you say? Uh, real estate sales, which is what you do. Uh, let me ask my colleague here, John, is not a feeding ground for uh, people to Harvard and Wharton. Is, it, would you agree with that? Yes, I would. On the other hand, if, if, you, if you're doing a lot of commercial sales, that's a bit different than residential. Yeah, okay, Leo, uh, you, now that you know this, make the case, tell me what you do at Compass with this in mind, if you know what I'm saying. In other sure. words, add in, the, add in the allowable puffery. <laughs> Let us know what you do. Definitely. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm a realtor at Compass right now, and um, I sell residential and commercial real estate. So with that, I really help a large variety of clients, anywhere from like a rental to buying and selling a house to investors and also to businesses looking to lease commercial property. Um, so how it all fits in is that, hey, this role is one where I... Okay, John, tell, tell him why he's uh, not, not closing the deal here. Well, you want to do it really quick. I sell real estate. And yeah, I, I sell, sell real estate. And um, one of my uh, you know, lines is commercial real estate. I've recently closed deals at blah and blah. And you want to give the best examples. In other words, you want to optimize the presentation. That's mm -hmm. what... And after yeah, you do that, a million dollar deal with yeah, yeah. and plans. after you do that, you might rewrite your resume. Uh, Sounds good. Uh, you want to emphasize the commercial side, even no mm -hmm. matter what. And I'm uh, yeah. you've closed some deals that are long lease deals that are in the multi millions. And if you had any kind of client that was popular or well known, you should name them, whether it's yeah. a prominent law firm, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Like, let me just point out something. At the top of your resume, I'm not going to hold it up. Your first line, instead of experience, says purpose. And you say, I'm a driven individual with a diverse background. I'm a quick learner who is always improving myself. Get that out of there, OK? I mean, yeah. I, uh, that's, uh, that's, not, that's not a business resume. <laughs> totally. Uh, that, that's uh, that sounds like something on Match.com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds good. Sounds good. My goal in life is to positively impact the lives of one billion people and change the world forever. How come only one billion? What about the other two billion? <laughs> great point. I figured that's a great way to start. Okay, get get that whole thing out of there. All right. Uh, okay. Tell us, uh, what is, tell, give me some numbers about Compass and what is it? Is Compass a local real estate thing or is that a national franchise or what is it? Yeah, so Compass is a national real estate brokerage um, and they have offices all over the nation um, and I'm out of the Boston office. Yeah, you got, a, you got on, on your just resume writing 101. You, you gotta you gotta put that compass realty colon is it a public or private company a private a public is it traded or yep publicly traded under uh, comp 
man, that goes on your resume, okay? Compass Realty, N-Y-S-E-C-O-M-P or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably NASDAQ or Big Board. Yeah. Which one? Probably NASDAQ. Oh, man, find no, out, okay? <laughs> yeah, you got it. They just IPO'd in um, April. Uh, well, that's good. Was yeah. any of that uh, champagne get into your glass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that, that's just some uh, resume advice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you've got to present yourself as someone Well, yeah, so let's say this is a mock interview. Let's say this is an interview, all right? Like the first question is, you know, what job do you want after business school? What are you, where do you see yourself in 15 years? Sure, so after business school, I'll be a founder of a company specifically in FinTech uh, with a real estate twist to it. And in the short term- What does that mean? Name a company that's a model for you. Sure. So something like uh, Zillow or Redfin or even a Compass. You want to? Is, isn't that your long-term goal to found? Or you, you, you. So that that's my short-term goal is to start the the foundations, find a business model that's great and scalable, and scale it. And long-term is obviously to take it public, if not exit. And yeah, sure, yeah, the long term is easy. The, 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 I don't get the roadmap. You, you just you don't you just can't say I'm going to business school to figure out a business plan that I that I could then start a company. Mm -hmm. That that happens, but mm -hmm. it's it's not something you can say. John, do you agree with me or not? Yeah, I mean, I I do think that. Um... If you want to do a real estate startup and you want to use your MBA program as an incubator, there are programs that might be better suited for you than the, the schools that you've actually picked. Sure. This is why we have John. Okay? Yeah. All I do is uh, deliver uh, incisive wisecracks, but John really knows the terrain here. Why don't you tell him what those programs and schools might be, John? Well, you know, Leo has. Uh, I, I, I think you're applying to schools that are too elitist for you. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, as, as a fellow uh, graduate of a state college in New Jersey, uh, I'm just going to tell you, you know, like, you know, Harvard is elitist. They don't accept many people with uh, public degrees uh, unless it's like almost a near Ivy. We're talking like UT, Berkeley, UCLA, you know, Michigan, uh, UVA schools like that. So, so what I, here's what I think you should do. You should apply to schools that have great programs among the world's best, but also have incredible real estate programs that you can use uh, to get close in with a faculty member who knows the market well to help be your mentor uh, to, to launch a company. So Michigan Ross, I put it at the top of my list. Uh, UNC at Chapel Hill, a great real estate program. Put them at the top of your list as well. Uh, NYU Stern, they have a real estate center. Really, really good. Uh, I, Indiana Kelly, they have a center for real estate as well. Those four schools, uh, along with Cornell, I would be, those are the ones I'd be applying to. I would scratch Harvard. It's a waste of time and a waste of effort. I would scratch, let's see, uh, I'd scratch, well, look, well, and I might scratch Wharton, I might go for Columbia and NYU and Cornell and Babson. Sure. So, because, because Sandy, don't you think, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, his chances because of, um, not a highly selective job, not a highly selective undergraduate education. There's a lot of silver to put it, to put it. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be hard. Harvard, Yale. Put it diplomatically, and, there's a lot of silver and not much Columbia gold. Wharton, really hard because they're all elitist. Yeah. 
and you, 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 real estate already is a step down, even though they, you know, it's just not like uh, consulting or investing as a as a feeder ground. Now Wharton has a great real estate program, incidentally, um, and you might throw the hail mary pass there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you did, you you need to you need to get uh, get to Philadelphia and you need to sit down with the head of the real estate program and talk to that guy. Um, Forget Harvard, Yale, Columbia, and MIT. It's a waste of your time. Yeah, and then and then you you uh, you're you're a guy where networking could really help. Real estate's a networking business. You've got uh, uh, something that business schools are interested in, although they don't typically admit people with a real estate background, largely because uh, a lot of people real estate backgrounds don't don't apply. Mm. Uh, that's why I say, you know, these schools with the really good MBA programs like Indiana Kelly, UNC at Chapel Hill, Michigan Roth, NYU Stern, all have real estate specializations and real estate centers. Um, and, and they're more, how do you put it? Egalitarian? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're more open. Yeah. And less, less selective is actually the... <laughs> The, 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 the mathematical and the uh, common sense truth. Yeah, I mean, these other, these, so these other schools, you know, they're interested in Ivy League grads or, or grads from uh, like the really elite schools and... Yeah, you just got, you've got a hustling background and a hustling resume. I admire that. The business schools, when they're not wearing their admissions hats, admire that. But the admissions office, uh, like people who have very solid, understandable uh, backgrounds. Now, as you go down the list of selectivity, once you get out of Harvard, Wharton, Stanford, et cetera, the admissions offices become a little bit more uh, rock and rolly. And that's mm -hmm. what you've got to find. Plus, you know, you got a 322. So, you know, the GRE average at UNC is 316. So that's really nice for you. The numbers uh, are solid at all the places. Where yeah, at UT, it's 316. But when you go to like a Harvard, you know, your GRE score is, uh, well, three, 326, 330 at Stanford, 329 at Yale, uh, Penn, 324. So just a little bit below that. But the problem is the the pedigree of the job in the undergrad. The pedigree, yeah. You, you don't have a dowry to make up for the fact that your numbers are a little low. Hmm. Just a little bit. And these hmm. other schools are for, great. For folks school. at home, let me just make this clear. Great 322, school, okay. 322 GRE is 72% verbal, 86% uh, quant. And do, do you think I should try retaking the, the GRE to get a higher score? Mm, no, no, three, the, and you got three, you know, Cornell's a 320, so you're above that. Michigan Ross a 319, you're above that. Not unless I, you could deliver something that would be a gift. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to, you'd have to be looking at something like 325 at minimum. Mm -hmm. So my, well, my attention to what you both said too, and, and thank you for sharing that too. Um, is in regards to the schools, yes, I mean, I understand, hey, it's a non-traditional background and they may potentially see it as like not matching their path, but wouldn't this be a value add if you consider it in the sense of, hey, I have a different background and different perspective. So if I'm helping to my classmates see things differently, would that be a potential pitch? Yeah, that, that, that is your pitch and you should make that pitch and you should make it very strongly and you should also network. Mm -hmm. I often say this, if, if in terms of Harvard, Stanford, Wharton, there's a guy out there who's very similar to you, who's got better grades and they'll take that guy. Fair enough. If you know it, that's just a shorthand for, yeah. you'd be in a bucket, they're gonna take, you'd be in a, you know, a male, uh, real estate bucket, uh, and that bucket, they're going to take, you know, 
15% from that bucket and there'll be people just with better everything than you at, at, at the top schools. And That's just the problem. You know, the competition is crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're going to be from Harvard, Yale, Princeton, you know, it's uh, difficult. Now, yeah. you've got some interesting stuff here. You know, you lived in Portugal, you've lived in Germany, Hong Kong, Taiwan, countries you've studied in Germany, uh, you're into meditation and yoga, you're a marathon finisher, you're weightlift, you're an actor, you like acting, you're into investing <laughs> in stocks. So you got a lot of cool stuff going on here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, believe me, try, try like acting like, like, I try acting like a guy who's great programs. Try acting like a guy who's really interested in commercial real estate. Do some <laughs> research on that, find <laughs> out, you know, and, and then you, what you need to do is create a roadmap from their business school to, you know, a very powerful, successful career in commercial real estate, you know, like, once again, my favorite, one of my favorite questions, whose, whose job do you want in 30 years or 25 years? Hmm. Don't say Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> so did Donald Trump, did John, did Trump go to Wharton? Yeah, undergrad, undergrad. Undergrad. Does he have an MBA? No. Okay, who, who you got to be able, to, Leo? You got to be able to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, who was oh, who founded Willow or Redfin? There you go. That's your guy. Sure. Um, I I didn't know that was a question for me, but yeah. Oh so yeah, sure. The the job I want is actually my own job, because I I don't want to. Yeah, well, name someone with his own job. If you Any know what I'm videos, saying. So like, uh, it's like who's a role model for you? Hmm. Uh, Grant Cardone, let's say Elon Musk. Um, Gary Elon Bill Musk, Trump. even though he cut your, he, he eliminated your salary? Yeah. Cheap date. <laughs> He's got his reasonings. They, they did backpedal, so. Okay, those, th those are role models in general. Who, who's a role model for you in the real estate business? There's, you've got to be able to point to people who have done what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you, 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 yep. Great, great point. Got to be able to do that. Yes. So my biggest role model in real estate is Robert Refkin. He's the CEO of Compass right now. He was actually what sparked my interest in the MBA because for a long time out of college, I didn't feel the need to take an MBA to achieve my goals until I read his biography earlier this year. And you know, he's a, a guy who came from like you know really. Uh, lower end impoverished background, made it up, worked super hard, got into Columbia, went for his MBA at Columbia as well. And then he had a mentor tell him like, hey, I need you to- Good, okay, it. that's a perfect answer. And uh, see if that guy can do something for you at Columbia. Sure. That, um, yeah, that, that, is, could, that could make a big difference for you at a Columbia. Yeah, that, that, could, that could change everything. If he could, um, if he's something of a, known quantity at Columbia and he could put in a word there that could change everything. Mm -hmm. So Cindy, that, what, what do you think Leo's odds are at Wharton? 20, 20%. There's just guys, it's too much Mishagas on a resume. Uh, Mishagas. <laughs> that's the perfect word. <laughs> how, how about Cornell? Cornell, with the right amount of, uh, he, Cornell's a good place for him to apply with yeah, the I right agree. amount of uh, networking and really doing what we've told you to do here, which is, you know, learning a lot about people who lead in commercial real estate, uh, reorganizing your resume. So it's totally along those lines, making what you, the description of what optimizing your past experiences toward more managerial work rather than just being a real estate agent, which is an easy, you know, real estate agents have a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And ju just to elaborate too, Sandy, on your point on networking, um, what specifically do you mean? Like networking with the admissions people or? 
networking with the guy. Uh, well, the first person you should network with is your boss. Okay. And then if he could write a note or a, make a phone call at Columbia, that could do it. Yeah. And then it's networking with admissions people going to forums or I don't know if they've started up again, just being out there contacting people, say, can you help me? Uh, that's, that's what it, you seem like a kind of a networky guy. Uh, go, go through who, who's going to write your recommendation. Um, I have a couple of people. One's like a, a mortgage lender I'd, I've done a lot of deals with. Um, another one is a client slash past manager slash uh, past coworker that um, both know me very well. Okay. You, do they know what it takes? Do they know what business schools are looking for? Mm, I don't think so, but I, I plan to touch base with them and just tell them what's important. <laughs> You're going to educate them. Yep, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't touch base. I'd present them with the base and say, could you please step on this and send, send it to the business school? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Um, That's legal. Yeah. So, so I'm going to give you a letter an email to the CEO that you admire, whose book you read at Compass. Yeah. And you should befriend that guy and say, hey, can I have a coffee with you? Yeah, that's called network. And you should tell him, you should, then you should tell him, hey, you know, I'm thinking of Columbia. Uh, here's what I want to do. What do you think? And, mm -hmm. and, and start that conversation because a recommendation from him at Columbia could be very important to you. Hmm. Now, would, would you use like his recommendation in place of someone that knows me well? Yes. Like, okay. If for Columbia. Or, yeah. or it could be uh, if he could write a letter, it could be a, you know, not a formal recommendation, but a letter. Yeah. In addition to your recommendations. Got it. Got Even it. though schools discourage yeah. that they're read, particularly if he, if he knows who to write the letter. Mm hmm Great point. So just that's the, that's the best outcome. Okay, gotcha. you mm -hmm. you were able to crawl your way, scratch your way, whatever, wag your tail into a meeting with this guy, and mm -hmm. then the outcome of that meeting is he'll write. He knows someone at Columbia, and you say, "Well, could you could you write that guy a letter?" Mm -hmm. That would be a good outcome. Gotcha. So you had you had seven target schools. Mm -hmm. I urge you to drop. Harvard, Wharton, Yale, MIT, and Babson. And I would keep Cornell and Columbia. Columbia would be your Hail Mary pass. And I'd add Michigan Ross, UNC, NYU Stern, and Indiana Kelly. That's what I would do. Man. Yeah. Is this, are we giving you advice? Is John giving you advice, man? This is a, this is a full service. And believe me, you get into any of those programs, you're going to love it. <laughs> love it okay That's and it's gonna just, it's gonna allow you to fulfill and achieve your goals and your dreams mm -hmm. now follow-up question john on on that list of schools um how important do you say it is for the the human capital factor or like the the signaling factor so you know if i'm out founding my own business and i say hey you know i went to michigan i went to indiana does that impress people looking at my company potentially looking to invest? Yes. Okay. And you know, at Michigan, they even have a real estate fund. So you become the student head of the real estate fund. You'll be investing in real estate at mm -hmm. Michigan while a student. Fair enough. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, I mean, you have a not slightly non-traditional path, but you're yeah, a non-traditional guy and you know, <clears throat> And you're a go-getter, I can see. I mean, yeah, and you're, you're a go-getter. You're a go-getter. These mm -hmm. are the scrappier places for you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, so crawl my way in and sort of just make it happen, right? Is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and believe me, you, you get a lot of help in any of these places that I mentioned. They're mm -hmm. great places. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Well, yeah. good luck to you, Leo. Thank you very much, John and Sandy. Um, happy, 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 happy Black Friday. <laughs>
Have yeah. a happy Thanksgiving. Sandy, have a wonderful turkey. <laughs> Will do, John. Okay. And giving to you both, too. Hope you get all right. Continue. And to all of you out there, this is John Byrne with Pods and Quants. You've been watching Fridays with Sandy. <laughs>